All right, you can turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 23. I'm just do a little short mini sermon here. There's a bunch of ideas that the Lord's been giving me, and I just I need to get these things out. Time is short. Um, I want to talk today in this little thing here about satanic hatred versus just simple disagreements. Uh, there's a difference, and I've seen this thing, and it's increasing more and more, the satanic hatred for myself, my wife, even my son, who's completely innocent, you know. And yet I get people attacking, you know, my, my little boy, and I'm just going, okay, um, it's pretty ridiculous. But I'm going to show you the two examples here of satanic hatred versus just simple disagreement. Um, start out here, Acts chapter 23, verse 11 through 14. It says here, In the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. There's the word conspiracy in your Bible. And, the, and they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Um, when you have people that get into this level of hatred, where they're actually wanting to do physical harm to somebody. You're dealing with a satanic hatred, satanic level of hatred. I'll show you the, the simple disagreement thing here quick. Acts chapter 24, just go right over, over to the next chapter. Acts 24, uh, verse 24 through 26. And after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. I've dealt with people like that. I have dealt with people that have just been, they don't agree with me. I've seen the trembling thing. I've seen the, the thing of them getting under conviction. But for whatever reason, it's just like, I, I don't know. I, I just I have a lot to think about right now. And I, I think that there's some things you aren't answering. And, and it's just like there's a wall that kind of comes up there. And, you know, they're just like, I don't know, uh, you know. But they don't want to kill me, <laughs> okay? There are Catholics I've seen, I've dealt with in things, both online and offline. And I get a witness to them or whatever else or Jehovah's Witnesses I've witnessed to. or We don't have that many Mormons around here. I've seen a few, but never had a chance to talk to one. But, you know, I've dealt with lost people and both on and off, you know, line and uh, Internet, what I'm saying. Um, and I usually deal with the type that are the second category, just simple disagreements. But what I'm seeing more and more as time goes by, I'm seeing the first type, the satanic hatred. Um, we are getting threats now, and we are uh, looking at people that are just literally just hate our guts. And, and I'm just thinking to myself, um, a lot of them are using intimidation. They're trying to use tactics of getting me so ticked off that... Uh, you know, I'm just losing my cool all the time and things, and they're attacking me. And they're, they're just some of the stuff, I can't even repeat some of the stuff that, that people are saying about myself and my wife. I mean, you know, good night. Leave my wife out of it. Leave my son out of it. I know my wife joins me in some of the videos and things, and she's, you know, a researcher helping me, you know, as a, as a help me should and things. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting old. And I, I oftentimes, you know, I... There's a lot of brethren on here and stuff, but a lot of these people, I just think to myself, you know, I am literally casting my pearls before swine. And with a lot of these people, I mean, it's just, they misrepresent us. They lie about us. It's just like, you know, and I, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to quit, you know, much to their chagrin, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's disturbing. Turn back to Psalm 38. Show you some encouragement here because I know some of you are going through the same thing. I mean, you get do get people that are like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, and then you get these people and they're just like, I'm unsubscribing from you, and you, how dare you judge me? And how, and, and you'll see this like 
anger. You know, I have literally seen people's countenance change. You know, where they're just smiling and just like that, they just go, you know, and they just their face just changes and their face will get bright red and and they get really angry. Um, it's really something. Psalm thirty-eight, verse sixteen. For I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got ticked off the one time because Greg Miller was uh, saying a bunch of filthy comments in my on my channel and stuff like this. And I got on video and I was mad. And I went like this and I hit my Bible. And then they show that clip. And then they show me, you know, later on saying, don't ever hit your Bible. And Stephen Anderson's childish because he hits his Bible. Well... You know, and what they don't show you is the fact that I took my video down. And Greg and I kind of said, okay, we made our peace with each other, and, and Greg's going his way, and I'm going my way. You know, that's it. But see, they, the enemies, they don't do that. Why? Because they look for you to do something like your foot slipping. Any little thing that you do that's just, just a little bit wrong, or just a, some mistake that you make or whatever else, they're like, Ooh, right there, right there, we got him, you know disgusting they magnify themselves against me yeah for i'm ready to halt and my sorrow is continually before me if i will declare mine iniquity i will be sorry for my sin i am sorry for my sin i am sorry for things that i've done in my past i mean i've come out many many times in my videos i realize i can't expect people to watch over what is it 1100 something videos right now i can't expect you to just watch that in an afternoon or something i mean i've been doing this for many many years um, but I've come out many times and admitted to being wrong. Many times. And I do not keep back things that I've done in my sinful past. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner. All right? Verse 19. But mine enemies are lively and they are strong. And they that help, hate me wrongfully are multiplied. Yeah, there's a lot of people that hate me wrongfully. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's weird to me. And again, I'm getting this thing now of people flagging my videos and people, you know, trying to, trying to find anything that they can do to shut this ministry down. And I'm going to be quite frank with you. They will eventually shut this ministry down. I don't doubt that for one minute. I've talked to Christians that have tried to open up uh, Christian bookstores and they sell, you know, books that some of the, Christians in the town don't like, those uh, Christian people will shut down the Christian bookstore. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, this ministry will be shut down eventually. I don't doubt that. It'll be come up as hate crimes or, or uh, I'm a racist or some other stupid lie or whatever else. They'll come up with something and they'll shut me down. Uh, I can see that coming. I really can. It's only by God's grace and God's mercy that I'm still around here on YouTube. But, uh, you know, the, the day will come. They'll shut us down. And, you know, you look at the, the anti-Brian videos now, and they're just like so many of them. They're multiplying. Just like our text says here in verse 19. Verse 20. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that it good is. I mean, you know, think about that. Just, I got to say this real quick. You know, I'm telling people salvation is by God's grace through our faith. You put your faith in Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross. You pray to God. You say, God, please be, be, mer be merciful to me, a sinner. You come in a repentant, broken, contrite spirit, and he changes your life. He does good things for you. Okay? He gives you a new life. New life in Christ Jesus. You're a new creature. It's wonderful. There's a big change that happens in your life. You know? Now things that you used to do and you didn't have conviction for in the past, now you get conviction and you're going, hey, I don't want to do that stuff anymore. You're still going to struggle with sin. Of course you'll struggle with sin. But you get a new life. It's wonderful. It's, it's positive. You understand? It's negative till you get to the cross and then it's positive. Right? When the Lord tells you to give up sin, certain sins after you get saved, after you get saved, did you hear that? After you get saved, you give up certain sins after you get saved, it's always positive. Every single time. You know, I follow the thing that good is. Changed life. It's good. 
It's good to have a changed life after salvation. Verse 21, Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Again, as we are in the beginning of sorrows right now, like I did in my other study, uh, you know, it gets vexing. I mean, it's just like, you know, I try to keep up with things that are going on in the world right now. And it's just like, I'm, so many times I'm just like, are you kidding me? You know, and I'll go tell my wife, I'll say, honey, Eric, I can't believe this. Guess what I heard today? There's some woman in Australia I heard, uh, she's trying to make it illegal. She commented that it should be illegal for women to be keepers at home. And they like put it on media and they're talking about it here in America. I think it's a good thing. You know, these women, you know, I think it's a good thing that they, women shouldn't be allowed to, to stay at home and teach their own children. You know, it's insane. This transgender thing, you know, uh, some woman says, I feel like a man today. I'm going to use a men's restroom. And so this man here says, I'm going to be a woman, you know, for three days this week and a man for four next week and, and whatever. And this one here says, well, I, I'm not a man or a woman. I'm binary or an alien or you know, uh, whatever, <laughs> telephone pole or something like that, you know. I think what I'm going to do, one of these days, I'm going to come out and start saying I'm, a, I'm, I'm, my real true identity is a spotted owl, okay, because they, like, took a whole bunch of land out, like, west someplace because of the rare endangered species spotted owl, and, like, they gave it this, like, sanctuary area to the spotted owl. So, hey, I'd, I'd like to have thousands of acres land out there, so I'm going to start just saying I'm not really a man, I'm a spotted owl, you know. <laughs> just insanity, you know. But God is our help in this time. And we can rely on His Word. We can stand on His promises. So, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.